Hey guys, this is Hargun Games, and I'm coming to you with a tutorial today for doing game ready hair inside of Blender 2.8. This will be going over using only curves. Um, so, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating something like this, uh, and we're going to be going over techniques of how to get this done faster um, and less tedious. Uh, unfortunately, I did have some comments, you know, saying, like, how can I, you know, do hair that isn't as tedious? But unfortunately, hair is a very tedious process, especially if you're trying to get it to look right. Um, and again, I'm not a master at doing hair in any way, but I am learning to do hair and, uh, you know, um, yeah, so I'm just going to teach you what I know from the Blender aspect and hopefully you guys can enjoy this tutorial. If you do, do enjoy this tutorial, please leave a like and uh, subscribe or, you know, share with your friends. Um, so yeah, so what you can notice in front of me is that we have our female, um, I've been working on this off, off, uh, just off screen um, in my spare time uh, and trying to think of a kind of decent hairdo that I would you know love to see uh, that I, I haven't really seen before and, and I thought mm, you know maybe a half ponytail or such um, with some bangs as a side swoop I, I did do this differently on my stream but um, yeah I'll leave a video of kind of like a time-lapse video down here as to um, that so that you guys can see the process but pretty much what I did was I just laid down a base and then I duplicated that base of uh, curves and then I just moved those and repositioned them a little bit to kind of give me a more variation in thickness now there are other layers that need to be done to this to get it to be a little bit more thick but uh, essentially this is what we will be um, doing uh, after the first pass uh, and uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to hide her original hair, um, and we're also going to hide her uh, very, very crappy bun that I made, um, and we're just going to have this kind of like uh, character right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create our curve, so we're just going to hit Shift A, and you'll notice down here we have curve options. Now you can draw a curve, uh, and you have all these other options, but I'm just going to use a simple Bezier curve. That's going to add it to the scene, and you'll notice that we can't see it. That's because we have our overlay overlays turned off. Um, so if you actually hover over this, you can see that the shortcut is O, um, and that's in the 3D view, uh, not in the edit view. So if we were to go into our edit view, I believe the shortcut would be Shift Tab, which is very very interesting. Shift Tab. Well, Shift Tab actually turns on the snapping, so that's that's one thing that I find really weird. Um, and O is actually proportional editing inside of here. So as you'll notice, um, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of discrepancy as to what the shortcut should be for the for this. But uh, yeah, you can turn this off in edit mode as well. Um, but in object mode, it is actually just O. So if we were to press O, um, interestingly enough, that still turns off the proportional turns off and on the proportional editing. So maybe there's something that they're doing um, to fix that. But uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyways, you'll notice that we actually added our curve, and you can see that it's positioned wherever the cursor is. Now, if you hit Shift and then hold right-click, you can put, reposition the cursor uh, manually. Um, so that's very nice that you can do that. Uh, but I'm going to actually hit, I believe, Shift-S, and then we're going to cursor to uh, center. Let's see if we can... Cursor to center... Shift S, cursor to grid, uh, world origin. There we go. I guess it's world origin now. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to select our Bezier curve, and we're just going to hit Shift S, and we're going to say selected to cursor, selection to cursor. There we go. Just so that we have a kind of primitive. I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to um, 2.8. And we're just going to rotate that to where it's facing straight up. So we're just going to hit rotate X 90 degrees, rotate Z 90 degrees, and then rotate um, X again 90 degrees so that we have a curve that's facing straight up. We're going to go into edit mode by holding tab and then selecting edit mode. And we're going to hit S Y 0 to straighten that on the Y axis. And we're just going to bring this uh, up until these little arrows are the very last arrow is at the origin 
of this object. So we want this to go a little bit down. This is because we want to be able to rotate this on the origin instead of rotating this in the center. It would be very annoying if you had to rotate this constantly in the center. Next thing you want to do is save your scene. It's very important if you're working with 2.8 to save your scene often because it does crash quite often, especially doing undos, which I've noticed, but uh, uh, it is in beta, so you have to be careful about that. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to bring it closer to our head, and then we're going to kind of scale it a little bit down, maybe to match the same size as the head, something like that. So with curve options, you actually get the option down here in this little panel down here. Um, if you're using the new update to Blender 2.8, it'll be this little icon right here. If it if you're not using the new um, update, then it should be along this uh, this row up here. Um, and this is going to allow you to have extra options for your curve. So you'll notice that if you go down to the geometry in your curve settings, you'll see this option called extrude. And if you actually start to mess around with this, you can see that we can actually extrude a strip from this curve. Um, and depending on how dense the curve is, so how, how, many, how many segments there are along the um, the strip or the, along the curve, uh, depends on this uh, slider where are you right here so resolution on the U axis so we can sit here and go one and if we were to try to um, rotate this you can see that there's it's not rotating because there's only one segment which means there's only this segment right here but if we were to actually increase the segment you can see that now we're increasing the amount of the uh, curve and we're getting a more smooth um, transition so keep that in mind that's very important for um, in you know the future coming tutorials of this uh, so we're gonna just gonna leave this at 10 because I think that's a good starting point for our resolution now if you want to um, have a twist method so we have the tangent minimum and Z up uh, I, w I usually keep it on minimum so that I can basically use the least amount of twisting along the curve uh, because you'll notice that if we actually were to control T start twisting this you can see that it's a nice smooth transition in the twisting but if we were to start playing with these settings so Z up doesn't really do too bad of twisting or anything like that but if we were to go to tangent you'll notice that it starts twisting like a crazy uh, belly dancer which is crazy so we don't want that we're gonna go with uh, minimum and we're just gonna keep it at that it's very important okay if you hit extrude you can actually extrude out another segment of the curve and um, this is very important because if you're making poly strips or anything like that you want to make sure that you kind of know what you're doing and in, in terms of the direction and uh, your textures and things like that so um, you can do that. If you hit right click you can actually set the curve radius so this will actually set it based upon what you have selected or if you have everything selected so if I were to select all right click set radius and then this little tool option will pop up we can actually set the radius to everything or if we have one of these selected and we hit uh, set curve radius and we start to mess around with that you can see that now we can actually get some sort of anime hair which is actually pretty cool. Now how do we put textures on this because that is the question of the day how do we put textures on this to uh, have just in general better um, uh, better control and and what you see is what you get modeling um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the radius and we're gonna set this a little bit high uh, and we want to go down to our option that's called texture space so if we actually use uh, UV mapping um, for, or use UV for mapping, we can actually set a texture on here. If we were to uncheck that, I don't think that there would be a texture on here. And then we can also match texture uh, space, which I believe will um, take this entire strip, depending on if it's, it doesn't really matter how many, resol how many um, segments it has, it will take everything and fit it into the texture space of whatever you have uh, on it. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a material for this object. So if we actually have our curve selected, I, I, this outliner confuses me because it says I have the camera selected when quite clearly I have the curve selected. So it's really weird to me um, that it does that. But yeah, we do have our curve selected, as you can see right here, Bezier curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a material to this. So in order to use the material, it's going to automatically say to use the nodes, unlike uh, previous blenders where it would uh, you'd have to toggle this on and off. Now the default shader, I believe, is now principal, uh, which is nice. Um, but you'll notice if you go all the way down to our, uh, your options, you'll see an option called blend mode. 
blend mode um, basically says that you know is this transparent is it glass is it this is it that is it refractive uh, we want to set this to alpha clip and then we want to also set our uh, transparent shadows to clip as well or you can set it to hashed I believe hash is like the equivalent of dither um, so yeah there's those options now as you can see we still don't have a texture on this we need a texture on this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to shading and here's where you're gonna do all of your hair texture options again we are going to save this because everything that we do that's a major update to it we want to save it just in case we lose our progress so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit shift a or it used to be I believe you would have to go in here and say shift a add a image uh, texture but now what we can do is we can actually go into our option right here and if you click on this little circle you can actually do this manually so we want to add an image texture to this and you can see that it's going to hook up automatically now we don't want to actually add a base color to this um, simply because I don't really have a base color but if you were to have a texture with variation to it like gradients and um, saturations and stuff this is where you would put your um, all of that stuff right there uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to um, go to our transparency that's the most important one and I think we're not able to do that in transparency so yeah it's fine we don't need we can't do that in transparency but what we can do is hit shift a we can go into our texture we can go to add image texture and then uh, we can open that and we can look for our blender hair now this is actually a very interesting hair texture that I had to make um, I don't know why uh, the coordinates inside of blender are like this but basically what I had to do is I had to turn my hair sideways um, and you can see that I'm filling up the entire space because it doesn't really do a good job of mapping the actual uh, curve UV to the 0 to 1 space so I had to fill up the entire space um, but again this is just to see um, your hair so if you had different types of hair like if you had um, flyaways or thicker hair or just basically all different types of hair then you would make a single image for every single one of those and um, you would have to make a category of curves for every single one of those or a group of curves for every single one of those so that you know exactly what to combine and then what to uh, you know leave out and separate into different um, UV spaces but we'll get into that a little bit later because it's very weird um, but again this is not going to be a single part video this is going to be a multi-part video because all of the stuff that we have to cover is not going to be, um, be be able to be covered in just one video okay so I had to make a texture like this and I had to turn it sideways because this is just how it handles the UV space now I did try to go in here and change the um, the texture space options and uncheck auto texture space and then try to fit all this but for some reason it doesn't really update it doesn't do anything besides uh, turn it black uh, for some reason so I just I just did this manually um, but yeah you have to turn it this way so it has to be facing in this direction um, oops go back so it has to be facing in this direction um, so this would be your top of your hair and then this side would be your root okay so what we're gonna do is now that we have our hair texture in there um, we're gonna save it again because we're gonna save like Mad Men uh, and we want to be able to combine our principal shader with our transparency and as you can see there's really no transparency option inside of the principal shader which I find very interesting um, that they didn't add that inside of here but I guess I don't know I guess it's just uh, too much processing I have no idea but let's hit shift a and go into our shader and then inside of our shader you'll see your transparent BDSF and we're just going to hook up our color to our BDSF and there's something interesting that's going to happen when we do that so once we do that uh, you'll notice that there is literally no clipping I think it's because I didn't actually assign the material to the object so let's just uh, let's just do this let's go here and let's go assign um, sign there we go uh, and then also we need to go in here shader and then we need to mix the shader my bad uh, I'm still kind of tired today I woke up really early um, so what we need to do is we need to go here we need to go to our BDS and we need to hook up these and then we need to hook up our shader to there and you'll notice something interesting is gonna happen um, you'll see that our our uh, white areas are actually uh, transparent 
and our black areas are actually opaque. So that's interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to invert this. So what we're going to do is shift A, go to our color and say invert, and then we're just going to um, place that directly in the center of that. Now you'll see that we have our ugly, ugly looking hair texture, but that's fine because if we go back into our clip threshold, we can actually change that a little bit to kind of um, complement it down a little bit more. And you can see it's still kind of ugly, but uh, I believe that kind of changing the color of the um, the texture will kind of help us with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. We're just going to change our color to maybe a darker color. Um, and I like to add just a little bit of vibrance to it. So maybe some kind of pink hair color uh, to give it a little bit of life. And all of the other shading stuff you can do once you set up your base um, hair. Because we don't really know exactly how the uh, shader is holding up in terms of like lighting and anisotropics. Because there's only one hair card. So you don't have to really do any of this yet until you start laying down more and more. So don't, don't, uh, don't fret over this just yet. Um, but if you want to, you totally can. Uh, what I like to do is I, I like to add a little bit of bump to it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just going to add a texture. We're going to add a... Uh, where are you? Image texture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into our uh, material. And we're going to go to our surface. Um, we're going to go to our shader, this shader right here. So we're going to click on this little arrow. We're going to go down to our normal. And we're just going to click on this. And we're going to say bump. So what bump is, is it's basically just a black and white image uh, that is projecting a height value. So if you've ever like messed with height or uh, normals or anything like that, then you know that um, bump mapping is essentially the same thing, but it's working off of a black and white image and not a uh, our sRGB image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the color and we're just going to bring it into our height. And that's gonna be put into our uh, normal and you can see that now we're just getting a little bit of that height information and we can also uh, turn off and on the strength of this. Um, we can also invert it as well, which is very nice. And actually let's put that in our height. So can we put that in our height or do we have to, we have to put that in our, So we have to put that into our normals. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, that's fine, I guess. Uh, let's try to just put it in our normals and see what happens. I don't really want to do this because it, you know, our normals are for sRGB, but let's see if that changes how it looks. Let's hold Alt to get rid of... Oop. See, the, working with this is kind of weird um, to me, but let's turn down the strength and see what happens. Uh, no, nothing. All right, so... We're just going to have to put it in the height. Height value is a lot better. So let's just let's just take this off and put it over here. There we go. Height value. All right. So that's going to give us a little bit of height value. Maybe we can also give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of roughness value in there. Okay. So now that we have our hair texture, we are ready to start placing these. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our modeling and Control save that again. I'm going to go back to here and we're just going to shift D to duplicate that off. And again, this is going to be kind of tedious because you have to basically kind of sit here and plan this out and move it around. And it's going to get kind of tedious. It's going to get kind of boring. This is why I kind of make tools for helping out. But again, if you want to use, uh, I believe Grease Pencil has a way of making curves or draw curves or anything like that, you totally can. We'll go over that in a later video. But you're going to want to sit here and you're going to want to place these and also plan out your hair accordingly. So something like this. And then we can sit here and we can go like this, rotate with the R, um, G to move, uh, R to rotate. And then um, we can also scale these, which brings the texture a little bit closer to this point, um, which is good for stretching. So if you want the, um, if you want the root to be a little bit closer, then what you do is you just S and you um, that would allow you to get the root a little bit closer to that. Uh, and then if we hit E, you'll notice that now we're actually elongating this texture. So with the first base, I would make these uh, textures of the hair a little bit thicker because they're a little bit too thin. But try to get close to the head here, rotate this, rotate this around. 
And again, I did tell you that we are going to speed up the process. Uh, we are definitely going to because um, this definitely would not be fun if you had to sit here and just constantly do this all of the time. So we are definitely going to speed up the process. Now, if you can't really see your texture when you start going out, see that's a problem with the clipping is uh, the clip texture is that it when you zoom out, it starts to get thinner. Um, so again, you can just bring down your threshold of your your clipping. And again, since we only have a color on here, we don't have an actual texture for the color. You can see that our clipping is getting a little bit better. It's getting a little bit more dense. So we can sit there and we can zoom out and it's getting it's getting a lot better in terms of that. Now, once you start laying down your first foundation for the top of your head, you can then go in shift D to duplicate that and then start laying down um, that and then give it a little bit of variation to it. You don't have to necessarily um, just duplicate it and keep it the same look. You can duplicate it and then give it a little bit of variation, which is nice. And I do try to make all of these different curves. I don't try to make these in the same group. However, you can duplicate the curves if you so choose. I don't recommend that because then it becomes really hard to work with when you start having all of these curves in one strip. So just a heads up. Uh, and I also believe that it doesn't work really well with just uh, with all these duplicated curves in one strip. So just a heads up to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, Alt A to deselect, A to select everything, Control T to rotate or twist, and then we can sit here and we can get uh, more hair, more hair variation. So we're just going to actually try to curve this towards the back. like this, like that, and then we can grab this one over here, shift D to duplicate that, Oop, what did I do, shift D, there we go, and then A to select, control T to twist it a little bit, to duplicate, control T, and we're just moving these ever so slightly so that we're making it more thick, we're, we're filling in all of this empty space. Like this. You really have to get used to the uh, to the the hotkeys, which isn't a problem. Now for this, it doesn't really matter which one I grab. Because I'm doing the top of the hair. keep doing that until you basically fill out the bang area of the hair. Just like that. Don't worry too much about filling up too much of this because again we can always again duplicate it and uh, you know make it make it thicker and make it more dense. Um, but again, this would be avoided if you just make your hair cards a little bit more dense to begin or the textures of the hair to be a little bit more dense. But you can see I made mine um, a lot separate, so it's not very dense in between that. So I'm just gonna pull these towards the head a little bit more. And the cool thing about Blender 2.8 is the, the ability to grab all of these. So let's go over to our body really quickly and turn off, uh, yeah, turn off selection. So that way we don't select it and hit B to grab everything. And then we can 
make sure just by um, hitting G to move it around really quick and then right clicking to put it back so that way we know we got everything and of course we didn't get everything like that make sure we got everything and then there and now we can edit multiple things even though they're not in the same group so we can sit here and we can now um, rotate these bring them down uh, maybe even scale them up a little bit or even scale them in um, that's what's so cool about the new blender is that you're able to do that and now we can sit there and we can grab each one of these I know this is really tedious but again this is something that you would do if you were if you had a lot of time on your hands if you weren't too busy and you just wanted to kind of relax and just make a hairdo or a hair don't so I guess I can bring these closer maybe even twist these a little bit bring these closer to the head just kind of mess around with it okay now we can go back in here and just shift D duplicate it bring it down the way this one's shaped so I'm just gonna try to shape it a little bit better and since we're rotating from the root you can see that we can rotate from um, this direction looking forward and we can sit there and we can rotate really fast so that we're not worried about you know centering it again or anything like that or repositioning it because it's off center so it's good that's that's why we made that that way and if you don't like how weird this is starting to look um, over in this area again you can um, grab all of these right click set the curve radius and maybe make them a little bit smaller over here so if it's a little bit too um, large you can just set the curve radius and make it a little bit smaller I'm just trying to spread them out a little bit more. Okay, so if you want to make these thicker, just go ahead and grab these and then hit Shift D to duplicate these off and then just kind of make them either lower or higher than the other ones. And now we can go in there and kind of like offset each one of these. This is going to save a lot of time. But again, this is something that you wouldn't need to do again if you just made your hair cards a little bit thicker. Um, in terms of texture space, like how spread apart it is, these 
like if if I go back to the image, um, if I go back to the image, you can see how spread apart these are. So filling this in more would help with the texture um, thickness. So you wouldn't have to worry as much about this if you were to fill that in a little bit more. So if we want to actually do this a little bit faster um, with the curves, what we could do is we can draw the curves. Um, I know this doesn't look like the best uh, hairdo, but again, uh, it takes a long time to do a hairdo. It's not like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and you're done. Uh, so what we can do is we can just you know grab a curve, um, uh, you know, deselect it, and then over here in your options, you will have options to draw, extrude, and uh, you know things like that. Uh, so we can grab this, we can we can draw a curve out, and as you notice, we can now sit there and draw our curve. It's going to also have our texture and our material set to it. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if there is a way to draw on the surface. Let's see, snap to the faces, and then I believe now we can draw on the surface. No, that's not gonna. It's not going to draw on the surface. Okay, let's try vertex. Uh, it's not going to draw on the surface either. Mm, center, medium. It's interesting. Oh, that sort of did it, but still, no cigar. Increment, maybe. Oh, uh, that sort of did it. No. Doesn't look like you can draw on the surface just yet. Um close though close but no cigar and you can see that the more I drag out the more segments are being added so that's very nice for that I didn't know that um, but we can sit there and we can draw out uh, hopefully no see that's the problem like we need a we need a way to draw on the surface why can't we snap to the surface volume maybe closest face, edge, vertex, increment, nope, can't snap to the surface, I really wish, uh, I really wish we could, darn, that would have been really nice, that would have been, uh, that would have been really nice if, uh, if we were able to do that, it looks like we can't, unfortunately, um, but if you guys get that working, please, uh, please let me know. Um, that would have been really nice to be able to do that. So uh, yeah, and you can hit Control T to twist that in the direction. Um, turn this off. No, turn it off. Escape. G, there we go, just hit G. Nope. How do you turn this off? How do you do it? How do you turn the turn the tool turn the tool off? Dear God. Oh my god. Turn that off. There we go. Oh my god. Seriously? Let's see. Let's try that. Not in increments. Face. Center maybe. Why am I able to move it, but I can't draw it to the surface? That's so weird. It'd be nice if we were able to draw it to the surface. That'd be so cool. Darn. But yeah, uh, I tried. Um, looks like you can't really draw it to the surface. I mean, volume. No. It just goes inside of it. Closest. All right, guys. This has been Hiring Games. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials. Uh, hopefully, I can get this working by the next tutorial. Um, and uh, yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.